Welcome back to another lesson in the free card for beginner series. Today we're going to take a look at revolving and patterns. Here we have an empty project and we're going to learn something new straight away. You want to break down your designs into parts. In Fusion 360 these are known as components but in FreeCAD they're known as parts. This is especially important if you're creating a model that has multiple parts to it and you need to bring them together later on. To create a new part make sure you're in the part design workspace. We're going to come up here and click this little yellow symbol and it says create a new part and make it active. You'll see in our part tree we'll have a new part in there. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to revolve and remember it's always good practice to name all of your parts in the work tree. Now that we've created a new part we need to click on the part and remember before we can do any sketching we first need to create a body so we're going to come back up to here click this little blue symbol that says create a new body and make it active. That'll create a new body for us in here and then once again we need to create a sketch so we're going to come up to this symbol hit create sketch select the plane that we want to sketch on and this time I'm going to select the XZ plane because we're going to do revolve and I want it to be oriented the correct way. So if we come back to the model tab and look at our part tree you can really see now how we break down our designs into all these different parts and it's good practice to do this whenever you're creating something new or adding something to the model make sure you create a new part we now have this nice tiered approach where we've got a part inside the part we have the body and inside the body we have the sketch and it should always be this way i'm also going to rename the sketch as well i'm going to call that revolve and i'm only going to create something really simple here just to show you the tools and how we can use those patterns as well we're also of course going to be taking advantage of our parametric modeling because it's good practice and it's good to get it into your workflow. We'll come up to our workbenches, come down to spreadsheet, we're going to go to spreadsheet, create spreadsheet and that'll create a spreadsheet here for us. I'm going to rename it to parameters, double click on it, that takes us to our spreadsheet. We're only going to need two parameters for this so I'm just going to go ahead and add them in. Remember to activate these we need to right click properties, set the unit, come to the alias and we also need to give this an alias which is going to be the same, hit OK. Cell turns yellow means that parameter is active. Do the same for the second one, hit OK, and there we go, we can now use these parameters. So let's click back to our sketch by clicking the tab on the bottom, double click our sketch, and we're straight back in here. So we're going to grab the line tool, I'm just going to sketch out a rough shape here. I notice the constraints are already putting themselves in place, as I said before, if you're drawing a relatively straight line, it'll know that's what you're trying to achieve. We're going to draw a few more of these in, and then we join them up, and now we can go ahead and add in our parameters. So up on the constraints toolbar we're going to grab our horizontal distance, we're going to select these two points. Just as we've done in previous lessons we're going to hit this little button and set this to our top radius. So we have to type parameters which is the name of our spreadsheet dot top radius we can hit OK and that sets that measurement up for us. I know it's straight away that's broken our design because we drew it a lot bigger than we actually want it to be. So let's go ahead anyway and set this up properly. So we're going to do horizontal. We do the same thing on the bottom. We select these two points. I want to make this a parameter. We're going to use the bottom radius. Hit OK. And that's adjusted that for us. Now notice this is broken. So we can go to our coincident constraint and we can join these back up. So we want to click this point and this point. That'll join those back for us. We can drag our measurements out of the way so that we haven't got to have them interfering with our sketch. We're going to use the coincident constraint again. So we're going to hit, click on that. We'll click on this point point and this point and now join them back up for us. So this now looks a little bit weird right we're missing some constraints and what we're missing are the vertical constraints. So let's go back to our spreadsheet click the parameters and now I'm going to set two height parameters so I'm going to add in top height and bottom height. Go ahead and activate these parameters we add a unit we add an alias Hit OK and there we go we can come back to our sketch and now we're going to add in those vertical constraints so we're going to come up we're going to hit the vertical constraint tool. Now we can select two points on any vertical line and set that parameter. So remember we click this little button and we're going to hit parameters, bottom height, select that, hit OK. That sets that for us. We use the vertical constraint tool again, select these two points, parameters dot top height, hit OK and there we go. Remember to always drag the dimensions off your sketch, it keeps it a lot cleaner. And notice all the sketch objects are green. FreeCAD's happy, it knows about position and dimension. Now we've finished our sketch, we can hit update and close. Now we're going to revolve this and the revolve tool is one of my favorite. It's so powerful and it saves you so much time. It's kind of a different take on it. So usually you sketch and extrude and then you set an extrusion height. But with revolving, it's mostly all done in the sketch. And to revolve something, we just need to come back up to the workbenches, come to part design, click on your sketch. And then if you come up to the menu, 
you'll see a tool here that says revolve a selected sketch. If you click on that, as you can see, we've now got a 3D object that was created from a relatively simple 2D sketch. And that's what revolving is all about. You can do some really cool stuff. If you look at the menu on the left, you can set an angle or a revolve distance. So in this case, it's 360 degrees, which means it revolves full circle. If we go ahead and change this, so if we wanna make this say 180, you can see it only revolves halfway. And you can do the same, obviously, you can set it to 90, you can set it to 270. If you really wanted to, you could make this as a parameter as well. I'm not gonna do that because I know I'm always gonna want this to be 360. And that's important with parameters as well. You've gotta know when it's useful to create parameters and when it's not. You don't need parameters for everything, only for the things that you think you'll be changing quite regularly. So I'm gonna set this back to 360. Now, depending on what type of shape you're hoping to create, you may not want to revolve around the vertical axis. So if you come up to this drop down, you can select which axis you want to use. If I select the horizontal axis, you can see it creates a completely different shape. And this really is personal preference and it depends, as I said, on what you're trying to design. I'm going to stick with the vertical axis and hit OK. Now what I'll show you is the circular pattern tool, which is called the polar pattern in FreeCAD. Now I'm going to create a new sketch and I want to sketch on the top surface here. So make sure you select your revolve part, click on this top surface, and we're going to hit create sketch. We want to create this on a flat surface, so we're going to hit OK. We can rename this as well, so we'll right click, rename, and I'm going to call this pattern. If we double click back on that sketch, it takes us straight back in, and we can carry on with our design. So let's draw a circle, we're going to go up and drag that tool, and somewhere on here, just click and drag. I'm going to create another parameter for this as well, so we need a parameter for the height that the circle is from the origin and also the diameter itself. So let's go to the parameters. I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna call it whole diameter. Remember, we need to activate those, set the units, set the alias. So we've created those parameters. Let's go back to our sketch. So to set the diameter of the circle, we can come up to this parameter to constrain an arc or a circle. Click on the edge of the circle, and we can type it in. We wanna use a parameter, so we hit the button, hit okay. We now need to add a vertical constraint. So we wanna come up to the vertical distance constraint, click the two points, we can set this up. We wanna use a parameter, hit okay, and there we go. Sketch object have turned green, everything's good. Now we're gonna create a cut from this just like we did before. Hit update, press close. And it seems that our sketch has disappeared, but remember we can toggle visibility. So come over to our sketch, hit the space bar, or right click and toggle visibility and you'll see our sketch object appear back there. Now what we'll do is create a cut using our sketch. So if we come over to our pattern sketch and click on it, make sure you're in the part design workbench and come up to the menu and click on create pocket. A window will pop up and you want to select the last option which is create cross reference. Hit OK. If you rotate around a bit, you can see that we've created a small pocket here, but it doesn't quite cut all the way through. And remember we can change that. So if we go to the menu on the left, click this little drop down, we want to select type and change it to up to face. We'll click that and then it's going to ask us to select the face that we want to cut to. We're going to select the underside here and you can see now we've got a nice clean hole all the way through. Now let's say for example we wanted to create multiple of these holes in a circular fashion around the top of this disc. Luckily there's a really powerful tool known as the polar pattern tool commonly known in Fusion 360 as the circular pattern tool and all we have to do is come to our object, select the faces that you want to create a circular pattern out of so in this case, we want to select the inside of this hole. And if you rotate all the way around, you'll see it highlighted in green. Come up to the menu again, and we want to click on this icon that says create a polar pattern feature. If we click that once, you'll see that immediately we have another hole. The menu on the left gives us a few options here. We can select the angle. I'm going to keep this at 360. But you can also select the number of occurrences. So depending on how many holes you want, you can change this. Let's change it to five, for example. You can see now we've got five holes there really easily. Let's try 10. I think we're probably better off with nine, so I'm going to change that to nine. Come up, hit OK once you're happy. And you see now we've made quite a lot of changes to our object there relatively quickly. I think you can really see just how awesome that feature is and how it's going to save you time and speed up your design process. Just to highlight on the patterns as well, there's also a linear pattern tool. So for example, if you've got a cut and you wanna duplicate it in a straight line, you can do that as well. So there we go, that's revolving and circular patterns in FreeCAD. Hope you found it useful. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video.